What's up guys, JC with Ron Strong. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, share, tell somebody about it. I told you that this week we were gonna do a, a little series on, you know, mob, gangsters, uh, just because it's very, very, you know, glamorized in our today's movies and, and shows and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it's an American, it's an American way, American gangsters, mob, all that stuff. But today I want to talk about Cicero and Al Capone. Cicero is a suburb on the outskirts of Chicago. When I moved out to Cicero with my dad and his new girlfriend, it was like a city inside of a city because it had like its own little culture. It had its own gangs like the street, uh, 12th Street Players, the Noble Knights. Cicero has a lot of history. So I'm going to share that with you guys. Like I always tell you guys, this is a educational purposes i share my life with you my experiences and all that stuff to if i can help somebody so they could uh not make the mistakes that i made and not walk the path that i walked this is not a cooking channel so if you're looking for baked cookies or a cake maybe one day maybe one day we'll do a prison cake but today we're going to talk about cicero and its history that it has What's up guys, JC with Ron Strong. Like I said, if you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe, leave a comment, hit that like, share, tell me what you think. Al Capone built his empire and organized crime in Cicero. Cicero was the first suburb in the Chicago metro area to have organized crime and major street gang issues. Cicero has a lot of history. In, 19, in January of 1925, Johnny Torrio, 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 stepped down as a boss of the Chicago outfit. That later on, I'll make a video about that because we're going to be doing a little series on, you know, American, you know, gangster mob, you know, culture. Al took the, the, took the lead in, in the outfit and became boss of Cicero until he was jailed in 1931 for tax evasion. Because remember, the feds can't get you one way, they'll find a different way to get you. And tax evasion is one of the biggest ways they've got most of these mob guys. They can't find no, no dirt on you, they're gonna put you in jail for not paying taxes, and it's al almost as bad as committing a crime. In 1952, when greaser gangs were starting to like form and were popular, no suburb had greaser gangs like Cicero and Berwyn. This is where some of the toughest and largest greaser gangs started, and it's, it's said that, you know, on, on 14th Avenue and 49th Street became one of the wildest sections in 1952. That's really close to the area where my dad lived when I went to go live with him. In 1979, the 12th Street Players and the Noble Knights began to allow the Latin Kings to move into Cicero on 50th Avenue and Roosevelt. That was, that was their first turf. Remember, Cicero was predominantly white for a very, very long time. Even when I moved there, it was uh, a lot of Italians and a, a lot of white people. It wasn't, there was very, very few Hispanic families living in Cicero in 1989. It started to change with time. I mean, now it's, it's, it's pretty much all Latin, but uh, a lot of Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, a lot of Northside people. Cicero got flooded with all areas of Chicago. That's why it's like one of the most dangerous suburbs right now. Um, my dad lived on 50th, 50th uh, Avenue and 14th Street where my uh, my dad lived on the second floor and as a kid I would see the Noble Knights uh, hanging out on the corner. Um, my landlord's uh, son lived on the first floor and I believe he was a high-ranking member for the Noble Knights because they never 
They never messed with me and never, never, never said nothing to me. And these were all white kids. I would walk by and I would see them on the corner, but they never, never said a word to me. And I, I believe it was because of my neighbor. By 1984, it was the Latin Kings, the Street, the 12th Street Players, Two Two Boys, Two Six Imperial Gangsters, and the Park Boys. By 1989, the Imperial Gangsters had had gone extinct in Cicero. They came and, and went pretty much. Um, in 1991, it was an all-out war with the land counts and the land kings. Um, when my dad moved from the uh, area we were living at, we actually moved towards closer to Roosevelt. And I forgot what the other streets were, but that's where the land counts had a, a little park on the corner where they would play basketball. And I remember how I had to like walk home through like gangways because that's when I was going to high school. It was my freshman year at Morton East. And I had to actually walk through gangways and run. And it was crazy trying to get home because it, it was like a life or death uh, matter. And um, for me to get home, it was crazy. Uh, just trying to run and outrun people, getting chased by cars, just to get home. Um, by, 90, by 1993, it was crazy because a lot of gangs from like the north side had moved into Cicero, the Harrison Gents, the Land Jivers, SDs had a hood there now, La Raza, the Sin City Boys, Bishops. I mean, you, I could go on and on and on. So many gangs uh, went to Cicero in, the, in that year that, uh, I mean, Cicero became a very violent uh, war zone with shootings on daily basis. I mean, it, it became as dangerous, if not more, than Chicago. Um, my, uh, this is the, the, the first time that I actually seen somebody, uh, get shot and killed in front of me. And it was my, my best friend, uh, Phil. Uh, we were in eighth grade at the Cicero school and we were hanging out at a park on, I believe it's on 24th street and 50th Avenue. I think it's called, I think it's called Morton Park, but the two six at the time were having an all out war with the two two boys because they were like the the predominantly bigger gangs in Cicero that were uh in the same area and they were growing really fast so they were in an all out war with each other uh we were at the park hanging out and phil was one of my very first when i went to Cicero school like i said it was predominantly italians and, and white i was there was maybe I want to say, uh, I want to say maybe about six Mexicans, seven. It was predominantly all white uh, in that school. But he took a liking to me. We started hanging out a lot. He was really cool with me. He would always say, sh you know, show me around the neighborhood. And, and, you know, we were kids. We were kids being kids. We were at the park hanging out. And it was so funny because I still remember it to this day where I was telling him that, you know, I wanted to start my own gang. And, and uh, uh, he was like, well, you know, what, what, uh, what's, what's going to be your colors? What's going to be your signs? And I kept on coming up with like different colors and different signs. And he was like laughing because he's like, well, that's taken already. That, that's taken by the 2-6. Well, this, this is taken by the 12th Street Players. This is taken. Like he knew everything about gangs, you know what I mean? And it was a, a, a night that I'll never forget because we were just kind of, we were being kids, you know, kids, I guess, the way that we grew up, we, we looked at, at gangs as, as, you know, something to do, I guess, and um, the next night, he actually got shot by a tutu boy on a bike, and uh, he got shot in the neck, and he uh, choked on his own blood and, and passed away. Uh, that was the first big loss that I took as uh, one of my friends passed away uh, through uh, gang violence, and... Uh, that day I went home and um, I got a hold of a gun and I walked around in the neighborhood. The Tutu boys used to hang around. Uh, there was like a pool in their hood where they would hang around at and I, I went over there. And this is, this is before I even joined the gang or anything. I had a lot of friends that were in gangs. You know, I had friends that were 2-6. I had friends that were, you know, Noble Knights. Uh, 12th Street players, uh, Kings, 
this is before I even joined the gang, but I, I just felt that I took the loss so hard that I wanted to get even and I wanted to, I wanted, you know, um, revenge. And in my head, that's what I tried to do that night. Um, luckily for me, uh, I didn't find nobody that night and I ended up going home and stuff like that. But this is where everything started to to change for me in, in my life. And this is why I, I share, you know, all these stories about my life and about Cicero, about my jail time and Mexico time and when I worked over there. It's not to glamorize nothing that I did or who I knew or, or what I did, but it's, it's to actually maybe teach somebody or, or, or show somebody that that was not the way to actually do things or not make the mistakes that I made. Like I always tell everybody, this is entertainment, learning, and I'm just sharing my life. This is not, not to glamorize nothing at all. The biggest thing that I, I share on my channel is change and, you know, wrong and strong is a lifestyle. It's not like a quick, quick no. It took me, you know, 40 years to get my life right. It took me 40 years to actually wake up and realize that, one, that life doesn't get you nothing good. And two, I mean, look at all the things that have happened to me. I've been set up, backstabbed stabbed shot at everything and it's led to nothing nothing good nothing good so this is why i share my stories this is why you know um i i try to put out there as much as i can so maybe the right person will be watching this video and you'll get something out of it other than that you know this is not a cooking channel this is not no uh Gamer channel, this is just my life, this is me, a raw, 100%. Sometimes I'm serious, sometimes I'm not. Sometimes it's just, however the fuck I'm feeling, it's, it's just, it is what it is. My name is JC, I am Wrong or Strong. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, make sure you subscribe and hit that like button and share. Torrio. 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 Let me step.